Yeah, thank you very much, Alan. Thank you for inviting me to to join the group. I, um, I'll just a word of warning. I've had that fateful message just pop on my screen a few moments ago to say my my internet connection is unstable. Um, so please don't hesitate to to pull the lever and send my chair flipped. Um, if um, don't don't suffer any um, you know I know how irritating that is. So so I've just had the message. So please do um, don't don't suffer that if it does happen. Um, Yes, as Helen said, um, I head up the employment team at Gorvins. Um, needless to say, we've had a very um, busy um, few months um, and the work that I do for my employers has been very much a barometer um, of the employment world and, and typically a precursor um, to, to what the government um, then do and react um, in terms of dealing with um, employers and helping employers in the economy. Um, when I spoke to Helen last week um, about um, Obviously, there's, there's lots of issues, lots of angles that, that I could have um, spoken about today from an employment law perspective, you know, unique to um, the past few months. Um, but Helen explained, um, you know, the, 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 just gave me an insight into the positive picture that she anticipated Frank um, at CDL um, talking about in terms of the shift away from conventional um, workplace practice. Um, and whether Helen just caught me at a bad moment or, or what, um, my, my view of um, things, I suppose, just because I only hear about problems, was was perhaps a little less le little less positive, um, in the sense that the recent issues that I've had to deal with um, in connection with remote working are where employers aren't necessarily um, all that happy about employees working away from home, um, and it's that um, the sort of question that's been put to me as well: Can we require? Um, staff to come back into the office um, and workplace if it if it suits me suits suits employer better um, and also I don't want to you know portray a contrary view to 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 what a you know even personally um, with at Gorvin's uh, you know a very positive story I think around um, flexible working home working um, you know picking up on a point that Richard just made in terms of the legacy of recent times um, whereas flexible working and home working traditionally from our perspective around employment law has been a battle. Um, I think that battle, you know, for the future is, is gonna be no more. Um, and and the, 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 the openness of employers to home working is gonna be infinitely better. Um, however, as I said, I only, um, in my line of work, I only tend to get to know the problems. And if working arrangements were all hunky-dory, um, then, um, yeah, then that would be great. And I get employers calling me up and telling me how fantastic things are. Which will be nice sometimes, um, but unfortunately that's not um, that's not what happens um, for me. Um, so I just wanted to give a bit of an insight into the legal framework um, around home working in the current climate, and in particular um, the options available for employers um, if if home working is not their preferred practice. Um, in terms of the base legal position um, around home working, um, the rules are of course very much subject to change. Um, and even local restriction, um, as Helen, um, you know, commented on, we, we, we may well be on the cusp um, of, of a local area going into tier three, which will obviously potentially have certain implications. Um, but for now, um, where we are, um, since May, the government was, of course, encouraging a gradual return to workplaces, um, not least to stimulate town and city centres. Um, on the 22nd of September, um, the government position took an about turn. And um, just to be um, specific and, and make sure that you're all you know, clear as to what the current government advice is, um, it is as follows. Um, office workers who can work effectively from home should do so. That's the first point. The second is that where an employer in consultation with their employee judges an employee can carry out their normal duties from home, then they should do so. That's the second point. Thirdly, anyone who cannot work from home should go to their place of work. And finally, employees in clinically vulnerable categories can go to work if the workplace is COVID secure, but should carry on working from home wherever possible. Um, so that is the letter of what um, the government have issued with regards to their stance um, around where people work. Um, and I suppose, you know, that begs the question, you know, can employers, are employers now compelled, you know, to stop 
you know return to work plans and 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 keep people at home um and a simple answer is no um the 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 advice that i've just listed those four points it all amounts to guidance um, it does not impose as such a legal obligation um, on employers to follow those four steps and in particular there the simple answer i suppose is there is still scope for employers to allow employees to continue to working um, from their workplace um, and the bottom line is first and foremost if anybody can't work from home um, then they should return um, you know to the workplace that is the starting point um, uh, you know simplest statement of position obviously where i've come across issues and where employers have, have called me up is is where there is that gray area as to um, where um, employees can feasibly work from home um, but perhaps as a matter of preference employers would prefer them to come back to the workplace um, and I suppose in that sense the government guidance gives two hooks really for employers to hang their hat on with regard to getting people back into the workplace and um, the first is a question of effectively um, if you remember the, the first of those four points that I mentioned um, the guidance was that it's only where employer and office workers employees can work effectively from home then they should do so obviously if an employer judges that somebody working from home does not fit that bill of effectively then they can um, make that judgment that's within their um, uh, you know discretion to to judge um, and therefore that can be a basis upon which people can be brought back into work and the other condition is around normal duties again if somebody cannot necessarily perform their normal duties then again that is a hook for employers to require people to come back into the workplace um, obviously that is this has to be again points touched upon already this government guidance is of course only one factor affecting return to work plans um, um, again frank and re reference to i think to to um, michelle around um, you know health and safety obligations and um, that obviously has to be taken into account on general employment rights but in principle those two hooks do give employers if necessary the ability to require employees to to return to the workplace um, what of course I see in practice is there are many different um, individual circumstances um, and there is not a case at all of one size fitting all in terms of an application of what an employer does and the message that it sends to um, its staff and obviously that can cause problems um, you know in terms of the ability to you know people naturally feel as though well we're being singled out or we're being treated less favorably you know look at them um, you know that's unfortunately it has been a, a feature of, of how um, employers have had to, to deal with staff in my experience over recent months however that is it you know everybody is different in terms of their personal circumstances in terms of the work that they do um, and therefore employers can only have um, you know that discretion to to apply to individual circumstances um, what I'll just do I guess to, to finish is just to, to portray that kind of legal framework and guidance into perhaps specific scenarios and circumstances um, and just see how they kind of you know play out to put them into to kind of practice so um, there are circumstances and, and I think Frank touched upon this with a couple of the, you know the individuals um, in CDL who, who have um, who have returned to um, the the workplace and um, you do come across instances where employees actually want to come into the office and workplace um, and obviously this can be you know it can be allowed however it really depends it does depend on the reason um, if it is the case that the employee can carry their carry out their normal duties and do so effectively from home then in accordance with the, 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 the guidance strictly speaking then they should they should remain away from home however as I said um, there is that condition of effectively which isn't defined it's entirely within the employer's discretion 
um, to judge what effectively means. Um, and therefore that does give an opportunity that if you are in that scenario, obviously it's not going to be contested. Um, if employees do actually want to come back into the workplace, then um, I would, as you, you as employers, um, hang your hat on, you know, this issue of effectiveness um, to, to bring people back who are obviously willing to do so. Um, it goes out saying that the workplace must, of course, be, be COVID secure um, and equally um, understand that the position can be quite um, fluid. Um, I think for those of you with, um, you know, on tenter hooks as, as parents with, with kids in schools, you know, everyone's at the moment waiting for that fateful message to say that, you know, a year group is being sent home or, um, you know, a class is being sent home. Um, so that can impact on childcare you know, arrangements unexpectedly. Um, and likewise, you know, and again, I guess the, the, there may even be a, a gender split in the, in the room around this, but we're now into the, the realms of the central heating needing to go on at home. Um, and that argument around, you know, you know perhaps, perhaps people being, um, uh, you know, reluctant to put the heating on at home and they prefer to put the, you know, put the bill on the, um, the employer by going into the office um, you know, rather than having their, their, their you know, gas bills spiralling. Um, again, that can be a feature where, where, which might impress on people, you know, a greater appetite to return to the workplace. So, you know, as I say, it's a fluid situation, um, but, um, you know, the, 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 the ability is there to, to facilitate employees who want to return to the workplace to do so. Um, and then I, say, I guess as the, the key um, scenario is where um, the employer you know, wishes to insist on employees coming back into the, the office. Um, in normal times, there wouldn't be any question that they can do that. Um, but obviously, these aren't necessarily normal times. Um, and I suppose the key legal question um, is that there is specific legal protection for employees, um, not suffering any detriment or indeed being dismissed. If they have a reasonable belief that their workplace poses a serious and imminent risk to their health um, and well-being and therefore refuse to attend as a result. Um, and what I'm seeing, and again, you, you, I'm sure you've had experience of this, that, that there are employees who, who do feel anxious um, about returning to work. Um, and the, I suppose the advice that I can offer, and this is again consistent with you know, the key message that came out of what Frank had to talk about, the key here is consultation. The key here is dialogue um, between employer and employee. Um, and obviously getting under the skin of, if there are concerns that employees have, getting under the skin of what those concerns are. Um, they may be um, capable of being addressed and answered. Um, you know, again, I've seen this from personal experience that, that people who have spent months in their um, you know, cosseted an environment of, of working from home, they, they have a fear that they're jumping back into a, you know, a COVID hotbed um, when mixing with other people within an office space. Um, a reassurance, obviously, around what steps are being taken around ensuring an environment is COVID secure through dialogue can obviously offer that reassurance um, and, and make a difference. Um, Worst case scenario, if as a result of that dialogue, that consultation, there is still a difference um, and the employer is insisting um, on a return to the workplace um, in a COVID secure environment and where they believe that there are no legitimate reasons um, for an employee refusing to return, um, then that does give the, there is potentially, um, you know, the ability to you know, it becomes a very contentious situation. Um, and if somebody refuses to do what they're being told to do, then it's potentially a disciplinary issue. Um, obviously, the, the availability of furlough um, provided, a, I suppose, an easy get out in a lot of cases, you know, to a scenario where people weren't happy or, um, you know, in terms of returning to work, furlough obviously beyond the end of this month is not going to be available. Um, so it may therefore be that we're going to, I'm, I'm going to be dealing with more contentious situations um, around employers coming and wanting people back to work who, who simply refuse because the options are far more, more stark. But I suppose just to finish, um, and again, consistent with the, you know, perhaps the one consistent message that I can offer, we you know, with what Frank was talking about is it has to boil down to communication. 
um, and 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 dialogue, and and from that point of view, hopefully between the employer and employee relationship, if both sides of the fence understand what the other is saying, then in most cases consensus can be achieved. Um, but um, but if not, there is you know if you are in that situation of wanting employees back in, then there are grounds upon which you can insist upon it. <laughs>